Hey guys, what's going on? Paul here. Welcome back to another Cardano video. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe and the notification bell so you never miss any of these Cardano updates. So today is going to be a quick look back at the week, see what are the major highlights of the week for Cardano, talking about some of the news articles that caught my eye, and we'll also take a look at the charts as well to see where we stand right now and what may be coming for the ADA price. I will put timestamps down below for anyone who wants to jump to certain parts and any articles that I cover will be linked down below as well. Also, please consider giving the video a like or sharing it out there. Leave a comment. That really does help with YouTube because YouTube hasn't been pushing out notifications about new videos as much as they should lately. So let's jump into it. Okay, so starting out here on my Twitter, using this just as the reference point for a few of these articles, because as I find things related to Cardano, I always share them out on my Twitter and in the Telegram announcements channel, which are both linked down below. So first up is the partnership, the cross-chain cross, cross -chain bridge between Nervos and Cardano that was announced a few days ago. If we take a look at the article here, you can see Nervos. I hadn't actually heard of them before this announcement came out, but when I started to look into them a bit more, they're all about interoperability across blockchains and building bridges that you can use tokens across different blockchains. This is something I've mentioned a fair few times in the past now that any token or any protocol that is cross-chain gives interoperability is going to do very well going forward. Now I do need to dig deeper into Nervos to see what they're all about and I may do a video on them in another while once I get to dive a little bit deeper into them. What this means on a very high level is that people will be able to use ADA on their chain and you can use CKB on the Cardano blockchain. As well as that the native assets on Cardano can be used on CKB. So when I do the video on that, I will dive deeper into how all that type of stuff works, how the bridge between the two chains works. But again, this is only the first of many to come, I would say, in terms of cross-chain bridges with Cardano. So next up, we had the announcement that Google will allow advertising again going forward from August 3rd. There has been a ban on crypto advertising in place for a long time now, but that has been lifted on August 3rd. So anyone offering cryptocurrency exchanges or wallets will be able to target people in the US. So again, look, none of us like being targeted with ads, but what this does show is that it's becoming the norm now. The cryptocurrencies are being accepted and the inevitability that they are going to be here for the long term is being accepted and basically Google wants to get their share of the money that has been put into advertising there. Next up, we may get a Cardano event in Ireland before the end of the year. So Bonex here have set up an event for September. I haven't got much details on it. It's up for Friday the 10th of September just to see what the interest is like. So I will put a link to this down below. Hopefully by that stage, the country here will be back to somewhat of a normality and we will get to go to this. So if things are fairly normal at that stage, I will be trying to get to this myself. Hopefully be able to meet a few of you guys as well. So next up we have the Daedalus release. So there was a fairly major release for Daedalus. When you go into Daedalus now, you will get a pop-up to say that there is a new wallet version available. When you download that, it is going to take you about two hours before you can access the wallet again because they have made some fairly big changes underneath to how the data is stored on your laptop. So you need to re-verify the blockchain again. So if you're going in and you need to send funds very quickly, you could postpone the update, send your funds and then come back and install the update then. So when you see here, some of the main updates are, I suppose the biggest one is how they're storing the data and hopefully that will help the wallet be a lot faster going forward. They've added in decimal places for native assets. So any native assets that you have now, you can customize how many decimal places actually go into that as well. Some of the other ones as well, the currency search, if I bring up the release notes, so there's the decimal places. There is, that's about decimal places. Then you have voting for Catalyst Fund 4 is open. So that opened, what are we, two days ago now it opened up and it will be open until next Friday. So anyone not familiar with Catalyst voting, I will put a link to this down below as well. This is how you go about registering and voting. Essentially, Catalyst is where any project can apply for funding to Cardano and then the community votes on what projects are going to get funded. 
community members who vote do get a small reward in ADA for voting. So there is a little bit of an incentive there. Previously, this hasn't been very much, but it allows the community to decide who deserves the funding for their project. So again, this takes you through how to register with all the different wallets. One big change this time is hardware wallet is support is now enabled and that is done through Ada Lite. So Ada Lite is a wallet for Cardano as well. They do a lot of really great work for SPOs and on hardware wallet side. So if you're using a hardware wallet, then Ada Lite is a good option for a wallet as well. Next up, what do we have? Tim Harrison put out this here about the Alonzo Blue hard fork went through. So basically what this is, is the hard fork happened on the testnet. The Alonzo, the Alonzo era is now in on the testnet. So that means that smart contracts are now rolling out on the testnet and they're starting to bring more and more people in. So every week that goes by now, there will be more and more people getting access to that being able to test it, figure out if there's any bugs, see what needs to be fixed. And by the August to end of August timeframe, we should be able to start the rollout onto mainnet. So again, once we go over the next few weeks, I suppose over the next month, we will get a better idea of more of an exact date for that. So I will let you guys know as soon as I hear anything. This video here on Charles, this is one that I did like to see. So Charles is going on the Lex Friedman podcast next week. Vitalik Buterin was on it last week. And Charles came out and put out a video saying, just talking about Vitalik and Ethereum because this is a question he gets all the time. But what I really liked about this one was Charles talked in a very good light about Vitalik, showed a lot of respect for Vitalik and what Vitalik has done for the industry. Because look, everyone gives out about Ethereum nowadays, but Ethereum has been the one that has set the standard that has opened up the whole possibilities of smart contracts in the cryptocurrency space. So they will eventually fix all their issues. It's just when they're going to fix it. And I don't think that any one blockchain, as I said, with the interoperability stuff with Nervos, no one blockchain is going to win. There is no one blockchain that's going to kill Ethereum either. Ethereum is going to be here for the long term. Ethereum will find their place. Cardano will find their place as well. And so will multiple other blockchains that offer smart contract functionality, but they will all have their own sectors. I think Cardano will have a very big chunk of the market. That is why obviously I am heavily invested in them and put a lot of time and belief into what they are doing. But if you have 15 minutes, it's worth checking that out as well. Square also looking to develop their own hardware wallet for Bitcoin. They're looking to develop this in collaboration with the community. So I think that's most of what I put out this morning. I did put out the latest updates as well on um, the last epoch for the stake pools. So again, you can check out the updates there. In summary, things are going very well. Both pools performing very well at the minute. The last two epochs have been extremely good for pool two. Pool one, this epoch currently is going to be far better than pool one, but in general, that's the way things work. They vary epoch to epoch, but over the long term, things generally balance themselves out. So if you want to support the channel, I really do appreciate everyone that delegates to my stake pools, Paul or Paul one, and Paul is currently the one that I would tell new people to get into. Okay, so taking a look at the charts then, you can see here the BTC USD. This is the Bitcoin price. We'll start off here and then go on to the ADA price. So this is the formation that I have been watching. I did put this out on Twitter as well. And you can see that we're respecting this channel very closely. I will also say that right now, I am a firm believer in technicals, but also considering what's going on in fundamentals. And right now I would say fundamentals are playing a huge role Fundamentals being any news that's going on out there. There is the Bitcoin Miami event that's going on. There's not so good videos going around about that, but I'm going to stay away from that. Some, some good announcements as well. So they will have a factor in this market. So you have to consider what's going on outside. As well as that, you have Elon Musk tweeting. There's other bits of foot as well that can pull this market or just pure manipulation. So what we look at here from the technical side is that when we had the initial drop, that's where I've started my uptrend here. The bounce up is where I have put my downtrend then. So the up and then the pullback. And then we went up again to try and break this high here. We didn't. We got the pullback. So again, that's where I have my first two points that have created this line here. When we come all the way down here, that's the second point that has made this here. Up to the top, you can see we respected this channel nearly perfectly. 
Pulling back down again, respecting the bottom. Up briefly broke out here yesterday before Elon Musk put out another Bitcoin tweet. Pulled us down and again this morning we went up to challenge it before dumping down and testing the bottom. So nearly respecting this perfectly. Right now we are oversold on the price, so on the RSI. So I would say that technically we should be due to push up and hopefully push up and get a strong break out of this. But, that, but as I say, FUD fundamentals right now are very strong in the market. So personally, I'm sitting on the sidelines watching this. My money is in crypto, but by sitting on the sidelines, I mean that I'm not actively trading this because it could go either way right now. So I'm happy to wait and see what direction actually comes clear on this. And I will do more updates on this during the week to see where we go. Looking at the ADA USD price, looking a lot stronger than Bitcoin right now. Again, you can see a similar formation, but we have broken out of it. And we come back down to test this, this uptrend here, and we have held it so far. But again, in the market that we're in right now, we are correlated to Bitcoin. So whatever Bitcoin does, it's going to play a role in where the ADA price goes and where most cryptocurrencies go right now. If I was looking at this and we weren't correlated to Bitcoin, I would be saying that yes, Cardano looks very strong right now. From where we were at the all time high, sitting right now at $1.68, we were up at $1.89 only two days ago. So recovered very well from the initial drops down here. And right now, Everything outside fundamentally and everything for Cardano, lots of good news in the pipeline. It looks very good right now. Is there potential for a dip to try and get in lower? Yes, there is. Would I sell right here for potentially picking up lower? It's not worth the stress for me. If I didn't have any ADA, I would start to DCA. And that's just me personally. That's what my general rules and strategy are. If we look at the ADA BTC chart, now this is on a one day where the other charts were on a four hour you can see extremely strong against Bitcoin. Anyone new, ADA BTC price is the price of ADA against Bitcoin. So how much Bitcoin it would take to buy one ADA. In general, you want to see that your coin is outperforming Bitcoin over the long term. And as you can see, the ADA BTC price has really been doing that lately. This run up here was for the Mary hard fork, which brought native assets online. We did have the sell off and then we were in accumulation here for a long time before getting the real pump here. And then the markets really turned bad and pulled everything, but this was everything came down at this stage. ADA has recovered extremely strongly here. And as we roll in for Alonzo coming out over the next few months here, I would expect this chart to continue on its upward trend. So that's it for today, guys. I do hope you got some value. Please do give the video a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts on what's going on right now and anything else you would like me to cover in these videos generally. So thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, notification and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for watching, guys. I do appreciate it.